Uh, I just want to talk to you today about photography and image making in the Caribbean and how photography shapes how we see things and how we see ourselves. So photography and body image in the Caribbean. Which way am I going? This way. The question is, like, do we internalize what we see? When we look at magazines, when we look at images of, of human beings, of women, do we internalize that or, or do we have other factors that help shape how we see ourselves? But photography alters our perception of reality. And photography changes with and also reflects the ideas of our time. Photo photographs also influence our opinions of ourselves and of the environment around us. Now, I know that some of you, there's, there's a graph up on the screen, and I know that some of you, like Omar over there who spoke, will be familiar with this graph. This is called the Uncanny Valley. And lots of animators and photographers are familiar with the Uncanny Valley. On the left, you will have, well, right? <laughs> You're going to have the uh, industrial robot, which we don't have a problem with when we look at an image of an industrial robot. And then on the other side of the graph, you have a healthy person. And as we go towards from industrial robot in imagery towards healthy people, you know, it's, it's fine, it's normal, but then we get to this point where the graph dips. And that is where images kind of look human, but are clearly not human. And things that start to fall into that uncanny valley of things that look human but are not quite human will be things like, say, robots that are, look very human but are not quite human. These would be on the cusp of the uncanny valley. But things that fall right into that uncanny valley would be corpses, zombies. And then coming out of that uncanny valley, you've got maybe some Walt Disney characters that look a little bit more human. And then we have healthy people. The problem is that in our modern society, in our magazines, what we're seeing is things like this. And these are being sold to us as human beings. But are they? They're kind of in the uncanny valley. Because if you look at her torso, her torso has been so elongated, I'm not sure that internal organs can actually fit in there in any sort of medical way. But the problem is, so as we, as we look at these images, we start to internalize this as what human beings should look like. Next. In the Caribbean, our cultural beliefs have long protected young women from the problems that many other societies have. Because in the Caribbean, generally, we think of a curvy body as being sexier, as being healthier. But over the last maybe 10, 15 years, as we have internalized more of a North American perspective and a European perspective, we're seeing a rise in eating disorders in the Caribbean because we have less protection now as we absorb the media that is coming in from the outside world. And Caribbean, young Caribbean women, young Caribbean adolescents, I should say men and women as well, are internalizing this idea of thinner being the idea of per perfection. And now eating disorders are now more prevalent in, in Guyana, in Jamaica, and in Trinidad. And there was a recent study done at the University of Mona that shows that not only is it prevalent in those countries, but it's spreading to the wider Caribbean as well. Now, I want you guys to have a look at Kimora Lee. These are both images of Kimora Lee. And she's lovely. She's had three kids. But the image on the left and the image on the right are supposed to be the same person. Now, I don't know what kind of high heels those are, but I want some of those. <laughs> and that's the problem that we have. As we look at the magazine, we, or in our heads, we go, yeah, that must be what she looks like. But it's not what she looks like, and that is what is being sold to us. This is a Ralph Lauren ad. This is Philippa Hamilton. And you can see Philippa on the left side. And there is the Ralph Lauren ad on the right as we are, or we are shown and we are sold this as being a normal human female body. She actually sued them because she was really just not having this. Now, as a photographer, I often look for models who I think are fantastic, people who I want to shoot. And I decided one day that I was going to look up Carly Kloss, who is now one of the hottest models that people want to photograph. She's fantastic. She's appeared in Vogue. And I've seen all these fabulous pictures of Carly Kloss. And when I Googled Carly Kloss, I came up with Carly Kloss as the perfect body. So I said, wow, Carly Kloss is the perfect body. But right underneath that Google search, what do we see? 
Carly Kloss airbrush to look less thin. And when we have a look at Carly Kloss, who is considered by many to be the perfect body in the model, modeling industry, this is Carly Kloss. And when we look at this image as Caribbean people, as women, as men, and we're being sold this image as the perfect female body. This is Carly Claus as she is in Numero magazine, it's a Spanish magazine. Now, the image that you're seeing on the left side of your screen is the original image. And the image on the right is what we are being sold. They have airbrushed out her ribs to make someone who is exceedingly thin look as if she's healthy and normal. And how does this affect us as Caribbean people? When we look at these images, how does this affect us as Caribbean people? Now, many of you go, ooh, ooh, yeah, ooh. And you're not, you're not attracted, you don't think that this is an attractive image. But the problem is that seeing images like this all the time recalibrates your brain to what normal is. So you might look at someone who is five foot 10, who weighs 100 pounds and go, ooh, she's too thin. That's not attractive. But still, your idea of what perf perfect might be is not going to be five foot 10 and 160 pounds. It's going to be, oh, well, you know, clearly five foot 10, 100 pounds is too thin. Maybe five foot 10, 115 pounds is fine. So your, your understanding of what normal and healthy is still recalibrated by seeing images like this, even if you don't find images like this attractive. This is a photograph of someone who's actually suffering from an eating disorder. This is someone who's in the, in the advanced stages of anorexia. Now, for me, I have no idea what happens with Carly Kloss, but there isn't a whole lot of stretch between this image for me and this image for me. It's not a lot of stretch here. Now, as a Caribbean person, and as a Caribbean photographer, and a female photographer in particular, I think that my responsibility is when I create images of the beautiful Caribbean people that I see around me, to create images that reflect us, that look like us, that make us feel good when we look at them. And I think that is the, photog that is the responsibility of all Caribbean photographers. Because if we do not tell our stories, if we do not show our images, if we do not show images that look like us, the wide variety, the spectrum that is us, the beauty that is us, other people will tell our stories other people will create our images, and they will not be images that we are comfortable with. I also think that my responsibility and our responsibility is to create images that make us feel good, that make the young people coming up feel good. The young girls, when they look at magazines, that they look at, they'll go, yeah, I could look like her, because she looks fantastic. Not, I could look like her if I didn't eat for three weeks. So as a photographer, when I shoot, this is a photograph that we took at North Point. And when I shoot, I love to celebrate Caribbean beauty in whatever form it presents itself to me as. So this is actually one of, one of my favorite photographs that uh, appeared on the National Geographic website. So I was really quite, I love this, this is great. I'm really happy with this shot. And we also shoot Girl Next Door, and we try to make sure that every time we shoot, we make people feel good, look good, and that it reflects our Caribbean aesthetic and our Caribbean people. And we try to make sure that everybody who's involved in our shoots you know, is, is someone who is healthy and feels good about themselves. And if they don't think that they're beautiful, by the end of the photograph, they feel beautiful because of how we shoot and what we've done. And... So uh, we create all kinds of images of all kinds of Caribbean people. So my question to you today is when you look at things, when you look at images out there, do they reflect you? Do they make you feel good? And if they don't make you feel good, what are you going to do to help create images of your Caribbean, your Caribbean people that are going to make all of us feel good? Thank you. Thank you.